So this person loves torturing other people, either physically or emotionally or mentally. They just love that sort of game. Generally, they have a sort of like mental disorder. Like something is actually not right with them because of the way like their brain is functioning. They seem like they're this like amazing person, but as time goes by, there's this really drastic shift in their pattern of behavior towards you. In a relationship, they'll be very good in the beginning. So they showed like over grandiose levels of like romanticism. So they may do stuff that you'll think, wow, the guy has never done this to me before. Hey, Sam from New Marketing New here and today I'll be talking to you about why most women end up with the wrong men and the four types of men to look out for when you're in the talking and dating stage. Now, this is a marketing and business channel. So you might ask yourself either now or in future, why are you releasing this type of content when you talk about marketing and business shouldn't shouldn't it just be financial and it kind of reminds me of a conversation that i had with my barber at the time and my barber said to me that everything that we go through we experience we learn is relevant to something else that's going to happen or has happened to us so in essence a lot of the time people think that if they're trying to grow a great business or do something amazing, they just need to focus on that one thing. But really it's everything around that that should be focused on too. So it's like your personal life and your friendships and your relationships. Sometimes it's, it's that thing that can affect um, if you become great at your business or what you're trying to achieve. And uh, for me, as someone that's just trying to grow a very successful business, I found that quite a lot of things that were stopping me or holding me back um, wasn't just the execution on the business side of things, but it was my friendships um, that were pretty toxic and my relationships were just, you know, in general, um, that were pretty toxic and in, frank, quite frankly, not that valuable. So it's only when I cut those things out and cut out, for example, the excessive use of social media because it just it would waste my time. It, it, it helped me to now get to a level where I'm starting to gain quite a lot of momentum. So I know it's a long intro, but I just wanted to touch on that. Now, uh, let's talk on the four types of guys women usually see themselves with. And I'll start from the right side and I'll go uh, towards the left and I'll break down uh, certain things that I've seen. Now, with this list, I'm not trying to say that I'm the only person with this list or anything like that. Um, and to be quite honest, I'm not a relationship counselor. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not any of these things. This is just from what I've seen, read, um, and just like data I've collected and data that I've managed to collect over the years on people with great relationships and not so great relationships um, what a great man or a not so great man is so just a quick disclaimer I'm not like a professional or anything this is just my opinions all right so the first uh, would be the guy on the very right my right I think maybe your left I'm not sure um, and this guy is what we call, uh, what I call the bad guy. So uh, the bad guy is someone that's pretty um, narcissistic, uh, hedonistic, larger than life type of person. So this is someone that like, um, the bad guy is someone that is in a sense, someone that only thinks about having a very good time and that person becomes a very problematic person for women trying to get into a relationship because they have certain like issues such as like commitment issues um such as like responsibility they they they're not that great at taking responsibility in fact they have a lack of taking responsibility 
life to them is all about having fun and a lot of like um you know like experiencing uh quite a lot of of fun stuff they're also someone that's like ultra charming uh someone that's really really attractive so you'll see this person this person is like a nine or a 10 out of 10 or something like that they look really really good and they use their looks and their charm because they know they they look good uh, they use their looks and their charm to kind of like sway women they're again because they're ultra charming they're really good at seeming like they're a really great guy and they're a great fit for you um this person um is quite different to all these other guys because this person usually has a dark personality okay so this person will have will be could be like sadistic so this person loves kind of torturing other people either physically or emotionally or mentally they just love that sort of game so they could be sadistic they could be a psychopath they could be a sociopath generally they have a sort of like mental disorder like something is actually not right with them because of the way like their brain is functioning and um because of this these people, once like you uh, start speaking to them, they seem like they're this like amazing person. And then uh, as like months or years go by, um, even if it, I don't even know if it'll get to years, but as time goes by, there's this really drastic shift in their pattern of behavior towards you, right? So usually in relationships with bad guys, if you're dating like a sadistic person, for example, uh, this person would would kind of like be charming towards you and like really romantic and so on but they have an, a very like sinister end goal and that end goal could be they want to like like torture you and sadistic people can usually go at great lengths to ensure that they uh, torture you towards the end okay so these people are pretty sick individuals because they can they can i mean i've heard cases of uh them even like marrying a woman so keeping a facade up for such a long time of this really good guy only to to start torturing you eventually so this could be in any uh sen like scenario right it could be how um you know when you're married or when you're with them and they can like hold you back or like hit you or something like that and then they might they may say sorry uh not because they're actually sorry but because they know that um their plan i'm sorry it's hot in london but they know that their plan of eventually torturing you could work so if if you get in a heated argument and then they like just slap you they slapped you because they just loved how that made you feel and look and that you feel of like humiliation and shock on your face is something that they really enjoy and throughout the years they get worse and worse and worse so that slap turns into probably a, a full out like fight one time or um, they start they can start using weapons they can start throwing items at you start using uh, weapons and like start cutting you it, it gets really crazy and really really bad other times i've seen um i've seen some stories where it can actually start in the bedroom so for a while um this person hasn't really been honest about what their like fetish like their fetish that what they kind of fetishize so then they'll like um they'll they'll start off with something that's pretty like fine and innocent then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse pro progressively so um not just the ch chaining up but it, it is something that would make you feel really really bad you know like you feel i'm very uncomfortable and they'll keep pushing this boundary over and over and over again now that's just for the sadistic people um the psychopathic people um, that you date, that's, for example, a bad guy, uh, would usually just be someone that can't really empathize or like sympathize uh, with you. So um, in, a relation, in a relationship, 
they'll be very good in the beginning so they showed like over grandiose levels of like romanticism so they may do stuff that you'll think wow a guy has never done this to me before so what they'll do is like they'll if they see you one day they they, they could meet you and almost seem like it's love at first sight right because it's like there's this just really charming really attractive person that saw you um is super attracted to you and they almost know what to say like the right things to say they can take you out on an instant date right then and there on the spot so to make you feel that they they see you like on the street or anywhere they make you feel really really comfortable with them and they take you to like you know uh, to get a coffee or something like that then from there they can take you to their house or something or or or, or for example listen and i'll speak about instant dates there's nothing wrong with instant dates like I've been um, on instant dates and things like that. Um, I, I just want to explain it in terms of someone being a bad guy, like a, a psychopath. Um, they, they know what, like the right words to say and how to be really, really smooth with you. And in terms of like over romanticism type of thing, it will be like, um, so they'll they'll meet you on a certain day like in the week right and in the next few days they'll kind of convince you to kind of let them know certain things so like probably where you work and then at your workplace they could um send in like some flowers and they remember the type of flowers that you like so those those let's say they meet you on tuesday and they you tell them where you work after like a week or probably two weeks of talking or whatever and in that same week or the next week, they'll, they show up with some flowers or they send in flowers to you and probably a box of chocolates if you like that too. Um, they'll want to take you out on really like amazing uh, dates. They, they really want to impress you really, really quickly. So they go all out, like everything that they do seems to be about you and they make you feel really, really, really special. Now, again, they have a sinister approach to this because they're... They, they kind of think, I need this person to know I really like them, so I need to go all out and do everything I can. And then when she likes me, I'll do whatever I want with her, and then that's it, right? Um, and that could be um, just being with you, right? So just being with you and having fun with you, and then and then like leaving you. But they can also just get they could also get in relationships uh, with you. And throughout this relationship, you start to see them change too. Like they start to get less and less romantic as time goes on. They start to lose quite a lot of interest in you. They start to talk to other women. And a lot of the time you don't even know that they're doing it. They're really good at hiding it. And once they get caught, they don't feel any sorts of way, like a, a single, uh, way about it they don't really care so you found them out for cheating and they're like oh okay yeah i cheated so there's no like emotion there's no nothing right um quite a lot of the time that if they're actually using you for something so for example if they're in a relationship with you because they need a place to stay or in, they're in a relationship with you because they um are actually kind of making money from you somehow so you're probably paying for a lot of the stuff that they own or they have um they are very good at like maybe cheating on you and then convincing you that they won't do it again and they they have no real emotion it's almost like they wear this mask and they're very good at pretending at, depending on the situation so if they cheated on you again they don't care but they'll pretend that they do so they'll be like wait a minute I've cheated on her. She people don't like when people cheat, I guess. So I have to act really sad and remorseful. So it's almost like a robotic sort of uh, thing. So that's one of the bad guys that you could date. Um, you could date a sociopath. Now, a sociopath, a psychopath is, I think, it's bo is born and a sociopath is made. But a sociopath um, could be a bad guy. Uh, to date too because they're like the the psychopath they're very like they can manipulate you they're very good at kind of uh, saying whatever you you want to hear 
So generally, yes, this, this, this person has some sort of like mental disorder. This person can have like an impulsive burst of um, anger and rage. So if you see most like domestic abuse cases, they usually come from dating this person, the bad guy. So you're dating a sadistic person, a psychopath, a sociopath, or just someone with various mental disorders. Now, I'm not trying to say, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not trying to say um, someone with mental disorders is a bad guy. I'm not trying to say that. I think there's certain types of mental disorders that may put someone in this list. So these are mental disorders that are incredibly harmful to also to other people so they're harmful to you too so the way that they think and the way the brain processes things will be very harmful towards you and these people that have impulsive bursts of anger and rage could be nice people in the beginning and then once you get to know them like they they flip like they switch um, instantly on various things and it, the anger might not be towards you in the beginning so you might see them as someone that's like overprotective and a no-nonsense person around you so if they see a guy uh, looking at you um, they don't like say hey man that's my girlfriend come on whatever they don't do that thing they would almost always jump to very uh, like a very physical a violent attack and it it may not even be that big of a deal but they'll escalate it extremely high and this is what um psychopaths do too uh um but only but i guess psychopaths do this when it's convenient to them but someone that has this burst of rage just does it and they can't control it psychopaths just do it if it's convenient and they want to do it and the sadistic people can pretty much hold their kind of anger or rage or what it, what they're feeling inside to then do it much later on so this is a bad guy for you um you can marry a bad guy and probably not know it or start to know it and um yeah so a bad guy is someone that you really want to stay away from so then the next people here would be uh the jerk now the jerk and the bad guy are I think two sides of the same coin in in, in a way. Um, the jerk um, it has the same qualities. So this person is um, very charming, uh, is attractive, is a narcissist, um, is materialistic. I don't know if I added that for bad guy, but I need to add that in. He's uh, very materialistic, very shallow. Um, it, um, if this person does, if you do get in a relationship with this person and for example this person uh, cheats on you, this person does feel bad for cheating on you but not that bad. So if you, if a bad guy cheats on you for example in a relationship, this guy would, would pretty much, um, if you find him out, he won't care whatsoever. Sometimes he'll even laugh when when you're talking about like when you're confronting him, he will sometimes even laugh. He really doesn't care. He really doesn't understand what, why you would be so mad, right? That would be the bad guy. The jerk feels bad, but not that bad. Um, they feel bad, but they, they're, they're like more of a ladies man, more of a player. So they're like, uh, whatever, there's more fish in the sea. So it's not really that big of a deal uh, for them. There's two types of jerks, I think. Um, there's... Uh, one jerk that is like a good man so there's something called a good man here in the corner and then there's a jerk that um, is not so so let me explain this so it, so it makes sense let me talk on jerk type a then jerk type b so jerk type a would be someone that believes that um they believe in like red pill psychology or red pill thinking. They're overly obsessed with stuff like um, alpha and beta males. Uh, they think all, wo all women are gold diggers. Um, they usually have a great body, re really attractive. They have really bad communication skills. They're very narcissistic, uh, materialistic, very shallow people. So if you speak to a type A jerk, 
this type A jug is like kind of like a gym bro or something like that, right? So they believe that life is about because they're narcissistic, right? Life is like about them and um the meaning of life or whatever is just them having fun and uh generally what focuses that is them having a great body and having loads of girls around them so that's type a jerk and the type a jerk is the type of person he hates simps so anyone that you know is seen kind of being romantic or overly romantic to women they their whole thinking i think is based on a pretty traumatic point in their life i think um, and it can date back to maybe high school or earlier in their childhood when um, they were probably like bullied and they wanted to be like the kid at school, right? So that's what the 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 jerk is, and the jerk has committed his life to pretty much being this person that believes women are gold diggers. All women want is a guy with a really good body and a lot of money, uh, and that's like attractive, right? and um they don't really believe in like being faithful to women uh to a, a woman they don't really believe in being faithful to a woman um again they they they're overly obsessed with alpha male beta male so they're in conversations constantly and saying i'm an alpha male that's what i am i'm an alpha male i'm in charge i'm a leader that's what they have to say to themselves but it's really not true um and yeah, that, that's pretty much type A. Now, type B of uh, the jerk is someone, again, that has probably turned into a jerk because of a traumatic event that's happened to them. So probably they, in their childhood, um, something happened, like when they were growing up. So probably their mom probably cheated on their dad and cheated with like a neighbor or something like that, right? And... And and then like for example that uh, their mom took half of their money or half of their dad's money sorry like because they were married and probably it, it was split evenly when it came to like divorce matters um, or probably they experienced something themselves in which they lost a, a wife or a woman to another guy and their wife cheated or something like that it's like it's like a pretty traumatic event so they live their life also um also based on this like traumatic event but i guess the way that they flip it is that in a way they, they see themselves as like a, a truth a truth sayer or something like that right so they believe that they have this like knowledge that most men uh don't have about life and about women which I don't think is even true, but um, that's a uh, type B uh, jerk. So they're, they're pretty much the same. It's just one, it, it takes a more righteous st stand and the other doesn't, like, if that makes any sense. So that, that that's the two. Um, the jerk too, a thing I forgot, is someone that's pretty like jealous and controlling. Now, the bad guy, is jealous and controlling but to a crazy level like this person uh needs doesn't f like needs to go through your phone a lot of the time um needs to check if you're not cheating on him or something like that um they feel like they control you so for them love is pure uh ownership so it's like i own this woman if she ever does something i don't like um this you know i will not accept it they feel like they they own that person so that's what bad guys do but they also can threaten a, a woman too about like hey um i don't like when you talk to this guy if you talk to him i'm going to like kill him and i'll kill you or something like that something super crazy um a jerk is like that too they're jealous they're controlling not as controlling as the bad guy so i hope those two made sense i hope i could there was like a difference i, I you know uh and then we'll skip over there's uh another person uh type which is the third type called the nice guy now the nice guy i think out of all uh these guys i think women either end up with the jerk or the nice guy right 
and not the good man or the bad guy. I mean, if you've been with a bad guy, uh, women will definitely know about it because they're treated really, really badly in these relationships with bad guys. And with jerks, they're treated badly too, just not to like crazy extremes. But if you've ever been um, hit by a man, sometimes like just, just crazy abusive, crazy manipulative relationship, you've probably been with a bad guy. Um, but yeah, let's go into a nice guy. A nice guy is someone that's overly nice and really kind. So, um, you know, the difference between, I guess, a bad guy jerk and nice guy is that um, a bad guy can be mean towards you. So they can be mean um, and they really like don't care. So eventually, what, when you're dating or when you're together or when you're married, they can be very bad to you. And they don't care because they don't understand pretty much the difference between right or wrong or if it's even a big deal. So they can be very, very, very uh, uh, mean towards you. A jerk can be mean towards you not because he enjoys it or he likes it. He's very mean towards you because I guess he's very uh, honest and transparent. So a jerk is the type of guy that um, would say stuff like this, right? Like you take, you're on a date with him. And he'll say, I don't know, do you want to do, do this, right? So, do you want, do you want to be intimate? That's a, a jerk would just tell you straight away. And he doesn't care about the actual, what you, like, if you say no, he'll be like, fine. Then he'll just leave, right? He doesn't, it's not, a, he doesn't care, right? He doesn't care. He's someone that, especially, I think it's type A, um, the one that wants to be like a good man, hopefully, I uh, hopefully I got that right, if it's type A or type B, but this person prides themselves on being really honest and really transparent, and if they hurt you, they hurt you, uh, they don't mean to do that, but if they do, they do, uh, bad guys mean to hurt you, so a nice guy is, is, again, overly nice, really kind, to the point where it can be very like weird and sickening. I think the nice guy, his whole personality type is, I need this person to really like me. So they go at great lengths to make sure that they're liked by people. And this is why jerks um, hate nice guys and simps. Um, they hate them because they're, they're really trying, uh, not just for the approval of women, but for the approval of other guys uh, as friends and stuff like that. And this is something that jerks hate and bad, gu and bad guys also really, really don't like. So that's what a uh, nice guy, his personality type is like. Um, there's two types. One could be like, for example, he could be called a simp or something like that. Um, they, a nice guy is usually speak behind your back a lot. Um, they avoid confrontation too. So if you did something wrong to like a nice guy, he can't really say to you to your face like, hey, you done something really wrong. I didn't like how you did this, da da da. They avoid confrontation nearly at all costs. And then they'll speak about it, but not to you. They'll speak about it to their friends. Like, oh my God, can you believe Jake said this about me? How dare he say this about me, etc., etc., etc. But then, when you walk in the room, they are then they they're quiet again, and they might say to the friends, "Yeah, I'm going to tell Jake next time I see him." And then, when Jake walks in the room, they're like all quiet. Um, so yeah, you probably know if you're dating a nice guy. Um, also, let's say let's say someone an example is let's say someone cuts in front of a line, right? And you're with a nice guy on a date or something. Someone cuts in front of the line in front of you. What a nice guy would, I mean, what a nice guy would do is that he won't say anything. He won't say, hey, guy, I was here. Why did you cut in front of the line, etc. He won't say anything, but he will kind of mumble on his breath like, oh my God, can you believe that person? Why would that person do that? Like, he's such a whatever, you know what I'm saying? And he starts um, swearing, but under his breath, he will never uh, say it. Uh, these people usually wear a mask. I feel like the majority of, not the majority, quite a lot of guys are nice guys. So they would 
almost trained that if you want to get a great woman in your life, you have to be a nice guy. Um, and what and I think the the inform the data that jerks have read from that is don't be a nice guy. So like like jerks don't want to be nice guys, so they want to be jerks. But in reality, being not being a nice guy doesn't mean you have to be a jerk. It just means you don't need to be overly nice for the sake of being nice and wearing a mask like everything's okay all the time, even though things are not. Um, so I think that's why jerks are also created. Like they, some jerks were actually turned uh, because they used to be nice guys and then they turned into jerks. So with nice guys, they wear a mask. And if they want to do like get somewhere with a woman, they would put on this mask like a bad guy and pretend that they are the dream sort of person for this girl and uh, a nice guy unlike a, a bad guy doesn't really have all these uh, traits that pop out so they don't they're not like mean they're not narcissistic um, they're they may be kind like they may be attractive but they're not ultra charming at all like they're not smooth talkers they're pretty awkward people so that's the thing that uh, separates them too um they are kind of good people but i guess if you have to wear a mask to kind of fit in or get somewhere you're not that much of a nice guy so i think nice guys should be putting quotes actually um these people in relationships um, like they can get in a relationship with a woman and eventually get married to that woman and I think with nice guys they, they settle more than anything so they're, they're great settlers so um, what a nice guy would do is he gets in a marriage with a woman and he's like well I guess I, I, I don't really like her like that because he probably wanted to speak to you to like get something out of you or to have fun with you like be intimate with you and then after that he doesn't really know how to end a relationship so you can actually see yourself like he you can actually see yourself getting even more serious with this guy and even marrying this guy and he's not even that like serious about you but i guess he'll marry you for the sake of like saving your embarrassment by saying hey i don't really like you like that anymore and um you can usually even have a family with this guy and he could be a good dad and do like the bare minimum and stuff like that to be a good husband and a good dad um yeah but this nice guy is 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 also like a pretty bad guy if you think about it um so yeah he does waste your time a lot um he will waste your time um, he's someone that's indecisive so if you do confront him and say hey you're not like how you used to be when I married you um, or when we were dating um, are you happy in this relationship because he's like indecisive and he can't choose and also just like the jerk and the bad guy I don't know if I added this in um, the the jerk and the bad guy later on when it comes to serious matters like like relationship matters they have really bad communication skills so like if you ever seen if you ever tried to talk if a girl has ever tried to talk to a bad guy or a jerk this is how you know if you're dating a bad guy or a jerk or if you're in a relationship with a bad guy or a jerk if you're in a relationship with these two they're very bad at communicating uh, the bad guy almost doesn't like uh, any communi like communicating like um for example you confront him about something so you say hey um is this true that you're cheating on me or is this true that you're doing this or you're whatever um he pretty much is like nah whatever whatever like he just like brushes it off and he doesn't want to talk about like trivial matters things that he doesn't really care about okay or he can just lie to you to your face and just tell you exactly what you want to hear now the jerk is someone that if you confront him about something and say hey are you talking to this girl or are you doing this whatever he will like he he'll be like oh just drop it man i don't want to talk about it oh leave me alone and then and, and then that's like the end of conversation it seems like you're talking to a brick wall sometimes right 
and um also the jug too and the bad guy quite a lot of their and the nice guy uh quite a lot of them they 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 like i guess they're the they're also the type of guys and this is no offense to people that play video games there's nothing wrong with playing video games but they will usually like play video games and like uh like have you there in the background and not really talk to you or communicate with you right um so yeah that's one but that that's a little bit of a twist i'll i'll try to explain that later there's like a plane a helicopter going over or something um but yeah that's it so so with the nice guy he's indecisive he's one foot in one foot out and he'll waste your a, a lot of your time uh it's not even funny um, a nice guy would rather cheat on you than tell you how he feels. So again, as I said, the bad guy would cheat on you and he doesn't feel anything. He's like, yeah, it happened. I'm sorry. Or he might, he may like pretend to feel bad, but there'll be no like tears from his eyes. It, it, it almost feels like someone is saying, I'm sorry, I cheated on you. Like, like no emotion whatsoever. Now the jerk if there's some emotion he's like oh i'm sorry man oh crap man like that he, he 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 acts like that like he cares but he doesn't really care now the nice guy um he doesn't he, he'll he cheat on you purely because he can't say he doesn't like you anymore and he would feel really really bad and nice guys will usually do anything in their power to get you back um so once they know they did something wrong and they'll they'll, they'll like they'll yeah they'll they'll do everything in their power to get you wrong but nice guys are just incredible time wasters you probably don't want to be with a nice guy they're just very cowardly very indecisive uh people um and yeah you just don't want to waste your time with with someone like that now on to the good man now the good man, a lot of women don't actually date good men. Uh, I think a lot of women think they've dated good men, but in reality, they really haven't. They've, uh, they've dated either a bad guy and a jerk or a nice guy. And this nice guy, because these are like two sides of the same coin. So like a bad guy and a jerk are like two sides of the same coin. A nice guy and a good man are like two sides of the same coin. So uh, a good man, is honest just like a jerk would be honest a bad guy will usually tell you a lot of lies but they look they, they kind of sound like they are, are true um, a good man is also transparent just like a jerk um, he's kind um, which a jerk and a bad guy could be in the beginning phases so can a nice guy um, but the difference is the good man is actually backed up by people if that does that make any sense so the good man is backed up by people so what that usually means is that um when like let's say you're 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 dating like a good man right a good man is someone that a lot of people speak great about like in front of them behind their back they speak great about them and almost nothing but greatness about them so you hear great stories about how they're so helpful how they're so inspirational how they've changed people's lives etc now the bad guy and the jerk they don't really have that so you would see that the bad guy and the jerk sometimes even the nice guy there's quite a lot of stuff that they don't tell you um like for example if you see the past of like the exes that the bad guy or the jerk has been with and why they broke up and stuff like that you'll see a common pattern and also like their relationship with their family isn't that great or you you know this there's a lot of chaotic clashes but with the good man again there's no one that can have a great relationship with everybody so there's going to be some but with the good man almost 99 percent or 98 percent of their relationships like they're so good even their exes talk about them in a really good way like oh my god i can't believe i let that guy go go that guy was amazing they're known as a leader a mentor even to people that are like like, like older than them so they're usually people like they're usually men people come to for like 
to be consoled like for consolement they usually can't they usually even by older people so people way older than them they come and they're like hey what do you think about this what do you think i should do now a jerk and a bad guy uh and even a nice guy isn't someone that people would come to for help and advice not financially i'm talking about help and advice right um they have great morals and ethics so really high morals and ethics which uh, jerks, bad guys, and sometimes even nice guys don't have Because you see, with good men, they don't like cheat on you And they'll rather tell you the honest truth Than, than like letting you go on for years and years and years and, and then cheat on you or You know what I'm saying? Or waste your time then tell you um, They also have friends just like them So they keep a team of A player men So what that means is that Like if if, if you want to know if you're dating a bad guy, a jerk or a nice guy, look at their, their friend group and look at what their friend group does in terms of what they do in their day-to-day -day life, how they treat people, okay? If they treat people pretty badly, if they have a toxic relationship with people, you're usually hanging around with a bad guy, a jerk and sometimes even a nice guy. Um, a good man keeps really good men around him too. Men that know what it's like to be men, men that support each other, men that are there for each other and uh, men that would speak really badly. Like if, if you said, like if, if, if someone said, oh, um, I'm thinking about cheating on my, on my wife or whatever, a good man would hear that and instantly shut you down and say, no, you're crazy, you shouldn't do that, that's bad. And all their friends would say that too. So they kind of keep each other in line and in check. Um, a good man uh, doesn't want to offend anyone, but if, it, if, if what he says does offend you, then it is what it is. But he doesn't do it in like a jerky like way. Um, uh, also, Let's see. A good man is really well spoken and he has incredible communication skills. So I think that's why, again, people talk positively about them. Because whenever it comes to an issue, whether it's in an uh, intimate relationship or a relationship with your, your brother or whatever, they're very good at communicating certain things and getting their point across really well. Very well spoken people. And um, in a relationship, it, it's like a breeze, it's like a fresh breeze. Because when then you want to confront them about something or you want to talk to them about something, they understand exactly what you're saying and, and they like listen to you. Like they really listen and listen to you. Um, like, you know, a nice guy would say, um, I'll give you an example. So a nice guy would say, hey babe, how was your day, right? And then he would pretend to kind of listen and he'll be like playing his game. So can a jerk do that? And also a bad guy do that. Hey, baby, how was the day? And you're talking, 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 and he, he's not even hearing you. He's like, okay, like, I was just saying that to be nice, right? But a good man, he he'll be, he will, might stop the game if he does play games or whatever. And he'll look at you probably in the eyes sometimes, most of the time. And he'll listen. He'll actively listen to each word you're saying. And you know he's, he's a good listener when you tell him oh yeah so i did this, this and you're talking for like five minutes and then he, he he's like oh so how did it make you feel when cindy said this thing about you when you were doing that and then you're like yeah um i feel da, da, da. and he gets to the root issue of certain things right so if you have a question for him he'll break it down in multi layers like he's he understand he understands uh people and his he's not like for example, a nice guy, jerk, bad guy. They're more hedonistic people, so they just care about having fun, etc. But this guy is, is a very like well, uh, well grounded, very responsible person. He plans really well in the future, and um, he always thinks about um, other people too. And he genuinely, genuinely, really, really cares about uh, people. That's the type of guy that he is. Um, a lot of women haven't been with good men because I don't think they've dated a man enough to get to understand, um, like probably long enough or in the situations to get to understand how he's like with his family, his friends, um, what they say about him. Y you know what I'm saying? So he's, he's that type of guy. Um, he's never cheated in his life uh, when it comes to women, never ever. Um, the something that he doesn't even like, it doesn't even pop up in his head. 
um, he keeps really good relationships with people, man. That's why I guess his exes like him and um, still talk great about him and why he'll be supported. And he's the type of guy that if he was to die, I think a lot of people will attend his funeral. Now, this guy, again, is not perfect. Again, this person would not have any of these traits here, right? But this person is not perfect. I'm not saying that he's like perfect man or something like that. But he's definitely not abusive. He's definitely like, from the time you speak to him, he'll tell you exactly what he thinks about like, so, so, so for example, oh, and I'll give you an example when it comes to like intimacy, right? Most of these guys here, um, especially a bad guy and a jerk, they would, they would want to be intimate with a woman on the first time, the first time they see her, first night, it's like, yes, I just want to have fun. A good man doesn't really have like, when it stands, like a good man doesn't get intimate with a woman straight away. Uh, a good man uh, tries to find good women. So he, when, he, if he's interested in you, he doesn't, com like, he won't want to like, be with you if he doesn't want to like, commit, if that makes sense, right? He won't want to have fun with you if he doesn't want to like commit to something. Whether it's it's just a fun relationship for a while or an actual serious thing. He wants to know who you are. And he's going to like kind of dissect you quite a lot. So he'll he'll not literally, Jesus, but he'll he'll try to find out who you are as a person, what makes you happy, what gets what makes you tick, if you're ambitious, if you're not. Like he'll he'll try to like break you down quite a lot. Um and yeah, he doesn't get into women on the first night. I know that's crazy because you're like, what? Really? Like why? Um but he he holds such high morals and ethics and standards that it's not an actual problem to him that he doesn't do that on the first night. Um or, or extremely quick. Also, when it comes to things like pregnancies, for example, most pregnancies, um, especially like if they're unplanned, they'll be from like bad guys, jerks, and sometimes nice guys. They are rarely from good men because a good man would, um, and, and and this sounds pretty bad, but a good man almost like he has set himself like uh, on like, barriers of protection so he knows like no matter for example if he chooses a good woman he'll know no matter what he won't have i guess baby drama issues or problems or whatever a good man doesn't have that a good man is usually with good women and they rarely have any sorts of problem at all so he, he, he he's very good at like covering himself and he's always thinking about what if okay so what about if i sleep with this woman and then she turns out to be crazy and then we have a baby and then i don't get uh well, i'm rhyming there and then i don't you know i don't get like a great mother for my child and this and this and this he, he covers his, his tracks really really well like he's not that type of person but a bad guy, a jerk, a nice guy is someone that I think the majority of uh, m men um, that get would get women like pregnant without planning it would be definitely bad guys <laughs> and jerks. And some of them are like usually very bad uh, father figures. They're not uh, in their child's life quite a lot. Um, uh, sometimes they do care about their child and if they do you're probably dating a jerk if they don't you're probably t uh, dating a bad guy he probably doesn't care about his own child because he's just talking about he's just thinking about his own um, enjoyment right a bad guy would usually like be with probably hundreds of women in the space of months um, a nice guy would be with a, a good man would be with like probably just a few um, and a nice, and a, but that's by choice. A nice guy will be with just a few uh, because that's just what it is. Um, also, I forgot to say this, but nice guys are usually not that attractive. So they're, they're also guys that believe women are, are gold diggers too. And they're like, oh, if I was a little bit more attractive, if I had a greater body, if I had like, uh, what you call it? Yeah, if I just look nicer, women would like me. Um, 
but that's not necessarily the case. Nice guys, nice guys aren't really that good looking. Good men are usually uh, pretty good looking. So they're like usually an eight or something like that, or 10, a nine out of 10. It could even be a 10 out of 10. Um, they can be charming too, but not like ultra charming. They do not over romanticize women, um, not just women. They don't, they don't do this over romantic sort of thing, right? They're very like, slow very like i want to get to know who you are before i even show you uh any sorts of like grand like like high levels of like interest right so the bad guy and the jerk they do that because they want to score they want to get in with you really really quickly a good man does not do this whatsoever he as time goes on though he gets more and more and more romantic but it's like a very slow process um a nice guy i guess can be romantic um but but yeah um he he, he can be but it, it won't be as great or as planned as a good man listen guys i hope this helped you out i hope this wasn't confusing at all right i hope this wasn't confusing if i did miss anything out i think i'll leave something in the description box okay um but these are the four types of men that you, sh you should look out for. Uh, probably the good man is someone that women should uh, date um, and, and want to be with. Uh, but to be with this person, you really need to change quite a lot of like your thinking patterns and so on. And I'll try to add some stuff in the description. Uh, mostly the women end up with nice guys, jerks or bad guys. I hope this video helped you guys at all. Um, if it did, give this video a like. Let me know any questions that you have and I'll try to answer it in the comment section. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from the channel. I know this is a marketing and business channel, but again, we do talk about life and all things uh, surrounding it. I hope I didn't miss out any points because I spent quite a lot of time. Uh, I spent quite a lot of time doing this. Huh. Yeah, I, hope that, I think that's it really. All right, guys, uh, I'll see you on the next set of videos. Thank you.